I do now want to talk about uh, how controversial he is. I don't know if you were on Twitter last night. I mean, it lit up. People were really celebrating his death. The Rolling Stone, their headline to his obit was a war, essentially a war criminal has died. He, he's been called a war criminal. He's been blamed for anywhere from thousands to millions of deaths worldwide. Talk us about this type of, you know, legacy that he left when it comes to being controversial. Other than that, Rolling Stone thought well of him no they did not think well of him the l l i actually have the headline they wrote this henry kissinger war criminal beloved by america's ruling class finally dies uh well if you can't take your foreign policy advice from rolling stone who can you really get it from um kissinger was involved in two very controversial um very controversial issues uh one uh was uh, besides his association with nixon uh which uh of course uh led him to be reviled by by so many but he was involved in the supporting not instigating but supporting the coup in chile and in uh in Nixon's policy of gradually sh shifting the fighting in Vietnam, uh, the American role in the war, to more and more uh, v South Vietnamese taking on the fighting role. But the Nixon administration continued the war uh, for the entire Nixon administration, uh, sort of a, a five or six years, and um, about half of the Americans who died in Vietnam died during that period. So anybody who uh, Nick uh, uh, Kissinger won the Peace Prize for the, uh, uh, along with uh, the lead Vietnamese negotiator for uh, the treaty that ended the war. But the treaty itself, in my opinion, was a kind of fig leaf. It was designed to get the Americans out of the war war without the war ending in defeat immediately but kissinger surely knew that it was going to end in defeat for the south vietnamese and the north vietnamese communists taking over a year or two after the americans left and that is exactly what happened now in a chile you had a minority government but but uh but democratically elected under Salvador Allende, and it was inching closer and closer to an alliance with the Soviet Union. Uh, in 1973, uh, there was a coup led by the general Augusto Pinochet. There was a very brutal coup. It led uh, to the death of, of Allende, a and the American uh, left. Uh, was already infuriated with Kissinger as being a warmonger in Vietnam. And so then they also thought he was anti-democratic in what had happened in Chile. They exaggerated the American role there, but American support uh, for the Chilean right wing was absolutely crucial uh, in uh, solidifying that coup. The way I interpret this, Brittany, is that Kissinger is what in the foreign policy realm was called a realist. That, that is, he just looked at what are American interests, including our alliances, uh, who we want to support our allies, we want to make sure that our enemies like uh, the Soviet Union don't gain an ally in South America to go with Cuba and so forth and make the American position there vulnerable. But Kissinger uh, realized, as did Nixon, that in the American context, you couldn't be a pure realist. And the reason you couldn't is that American voters think that part of our interests are in our ideals, in our goals. So when you have a situation like what happened in Chile, you have the interest of keeping the Soviet Union out as an ally, contradicting 
the fact that we uh, normally support uh, democratic institutions and democratic leaders, and we don't overthrow them. So you have the two clashing. And in that context, people like uh, Kissinger and Nixon uh, are caught betwixt and between. But Henry Kissinger made no apologies for any of that. 